Hey everyone, how are you doing? I heard that you wanna become God. Today, we are gonna teach you how to become God in 5 easy steps. You just have to follow exactly what Jesus did. Step number 1. You should be very clear that you are not God and you are a man and you are here to deliver a message from God, like every prophet. Do you wanna prove from the Bible? Okay. John 8.40 As it is, you're looking for a way to kill me, a man, who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Here Jesus is saying that he's just a man who's telling us what he heard from God. Right? Luke 18.19 Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. Here Jesus is saying that we can only call God good. But because Jesus is not God, we can't call him good. Is it clear? Check this out. John 20, 17. I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Here Jesus is referring to God as his Father and our Father too. So God is the Father of everybody, not only him. John 14, 28. The Father is greater than I. Here Jesus is saying that our Father, God, is greater than him. If he's God, how come God is greater than him? John 4, 19, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Matthew 21, 11, crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet. John 7, 40, surely this man is a prophet. These are just three examples from the Bible referring to Jesus as a prophet. John 17, 3, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. This verse is making a clear distinction between the one true God and Jesus, the prophet he sent to us. John 5.30 By myself I can do nothing. Here Jesus is clarifying that he can't do miracles by himself. God gave him these abilities like he gave the ability to do miracles to Moses and other prophets. Step number two. You should pray to God and prostrate yourself to him. John 17.1 After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed. Matthew 26, 39, going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. By praying to God, you make sure that everyone understands that you cannot possibly be God himself. If you are God himself, then who are you praying to? Also, you teach people that praying is done by putting your face to the ground. Step number three, you should teach people to worship one God only and pray to him only like you. Luke 4, 8, Jesus answered, it's written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Mark 12, 29, the most important one, answered Jesus, is here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus made himself very clear that God is one. He didn't say three and he didn't say three in one. Step number four. You should ask people to follow laws of God perfectly and to be more righteous than the Jews. Matthew 5, 17 to 20. Number 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Here Jesus is clarifying that he is not preaching a new religion and we should follow the Mosaic law. Number 18. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Here Jesus is clarifying that we should follow God's laws until the end of time and never, ever ignore them. Number 19. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly, he will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands, he will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Here Jesus is saying that we will be judged based on our deeds according to God's laws, not based on faith alone. Number 20. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Here Jesus is saying that if you don't follow the laws perfectly, even better than the Jews, you will not enter eternal paradise. Finally, step number 5. You should spend your whole life never claiming to be God or part of a trinity and follow exactly every law in the Mosaic law and then go away, and wait for the interesting part of history to happen. First, one of your enemies, 
who spent his life persecuting Christians, let's call him Paul for now, will have a better idea to destroy your religion. Instead of using force, he can just claim that while walking alone in a desert next to Syria, he got a revelation from God himself, saying that all laws that Jesus taught in his life are just a curse, and we don't have to follow them anymore. Even though Jesus was very clear when he taught us that we will be judged based on how good we are in obeying the laws, Paul says that having eternal life in paradise is by belief alone, and following the laws like Jesus is just a curse. So a rapist or a murderer who has belief will have eternal life in paradise, but a good decent person who does charity and helps humanity but does not believe Paul will be in hell. Totally makes sense. And the funny thing is that because people hate obeying God's laws and just want to drink alcohol and sleep around and have fun, some of them will just ignore Jesus and believe Paul. Fortunately, it's not all of the Christians. It was only some of them who followed Paul and the majority still follow Jesus. That's why we found more than 50 Gospels representing the division between the people of this era about Jesus' life. But that's not the end of it. Wait 200 more years. Because the pagan Roman Emperor Constantine I needed a way to unite the people under his rule and control the pagans and the Christians who followed Jesus and the new Christians who ignored Jesus and followed Paul with a unified religion for all of them, he decided in AD 325 to gather a council of Christian bishops in the first council of Nicaea. And in this council, they decided to create one official new religion for Rome. They chose one story from the available stories about Jesus. They took only four Gospels from the 50 plus Gospels available back then and threw away the others. And they mixed it with the former pagan religion concept of Father God, Son God. They even united the holidays of the two religions, the pagan one and the Christian one. For example, the pagan winter holiday of the Son God birthday became the winter holiday of the Son of God birthday, while Jesus wasn't even born in the winter and they liked the idea of church leaders having full authority given to them by the Holy Spirit. So they came up with the Trinity idea in AD 381 in the First Council of Constantinople. Because if people think that church leaders are appointed by God to tell us what to do, people will just obey them in everything. And also, they will become extremely rich, which actually happened to the church throughout the whole medieval period. Google it. Church leaders asked people to give them all their surplus money. Church leaders would even sell get out of hell certificates for the elites. They would do anything for money. And original Christians who actually rejected this new man-made religion and kept following the original teachings of Jesus were persecuted and killed and tortured until they extinct. And this new man-made religion was created and became the new Christianity almost 400 years after Jesus it has nothing to do with Jesus, or his teachings, or God. It's simply prepared, cooked, and served by the Romans. That's it. And then a lot of people liked the idea of a religion without any laws. You can do whatever you want in life without any limits, and then for some reason you deserve eternal happiness in heaven. Sounds great. All you have to do is just to believe a story. That's it. That was the reason that this man-made religion spread very quickly. For example, the only reason the Russian leader Vladimir converted his country to Christianity, not Judaism, not Islam, is simply because he liked drinking alcohol. He called the council of his lords and sent them abroad to investigate the merits and demerits of these three religions, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. They came back, they said the Jews show their devotion by circumcising their young, and they don't eat pork. Vladimir decided not to convert to Judaism. They said Muslims are powerful, but they seem glum. They pray too often and do not seem to enjoy life. They don't dance or listen to music and they forbid drinking. Vladimir famously replied, drinking is a joy to the Russ. We cannot do without it. Islam and Judaism were out and the Orthodox Christianity of the Eastern Church was in. He's not looking for the truth. He's not looking for God. He's just looking for a way to sin without feeling guilty about it. This is not the funny part. The funny part is nowadays. People know this story and know the full history of the current version of fake Christianity introduced by the Roman Church. 
the fake Christianity that completely contradicts the teaching of the Christ himself. But for some people who are still pure and do not care about guilt-free sinning that much, the story of this fake religion does not make sense to them. Question, and so how can you learn more and more about him himself? Because it said Jesus grew up, he learned more and more about God, his son. Well, because when Jesus came down to earth, um, he grew up as a regular human being, too. So he would read the, the Bible, and that kind of thing. So he would learn more and more about himself. Mm -hmm. I wish that someday we stop forcing this illogical fake story on our innocent children and give them chance to learn about true Jesus and true God. Even church officials when they are confronted with their contradiction with the Bible they have no answer. They can't explain why they are teaching people to go against every word that Jesus said. Are you implying that he was a God? Is that what yes, I'm mean? saying he is the God. There okay. you go. Sure. Now, what do so that's what we, dis that's what what we make disagree of? on. Okay. What do you make of those clear-cut and direct verses from Jesus himself that clearly say that the God of Israel is the God Almighty, the God of Abraham, and he is not God, and he categorically says that I am a man, I am a human being. It's not one verse, it's multiple verses. Let me give you one example. He's a man would, while he's here in the would, form of Jesus. I, I, would like, I would like you to respond to these things when he says that now you seek to kill me a man who heard the truth from God. So who, who is in his mind, he's thinking that who is God and who is himself. And he says, whatever he says, is he heard from God Almighty. Why was Jesus this is crucified? Not one place. Let me finish this. This okay. is not one place. He also says that my doctrine is not mine but the one who sent me. So whatever he preached is not construct of his own mind. This is what he got from his God Almighty, who he says he is his God. Now you seek to kill me, a man who has heard a truth from who? God. So himself is identifying as a man, and he's identifying God Almighty as a separate being from whom he is getting his message. I understand. He is thinking of himself. I understand the difficulty of the Trinity. I think you're switching. I want you yes. to respond. I'm, to, I'm, listen, let's listen, not go add. towards the Christian. Jesus I said. I want you to respond to this. When he says himself, see, the thing is, you have to pay attention to what Jesus is saying, not to somebody else who is saying something about Jesus. We're talking what he said. That's exactly right. So I totally when he agree. Says, when he says that you, so that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you sent. Who is he talking to? Okay, can I answer now? Please. Thank you. Yes. Who is he talking to? Let when me, Jesus was in front of the Pharisees, and they asked him who he was, and he gave an answer. What did he say? They said, that's blasphemy. No, no, no. What, he, what answer did he say? I don't have it memorized, but no, no, no. they said, that's you blasphemy. You have the Bible right here. I want you to tell me what was his answer? Why was Jesus crucified? Did he say something? Because of blasphemy. That's yes. what the Pharisees and said. You, you just, they, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quoting your own scenario. You said he was asked a question right. and he answered something and then they understood him some way. I want you to tell me what was his answer. Okay. And tell me that when he says that you are the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you said, who is he as telling that he's the only true God? Who is he talking to? I want you to respond to this verse that this is clear cut. I mean, you don't need the tools of implication to explain this verse to me. Which one you wanted Ed to look at? Maybe I can help. Actually, what he said that he you was are the asked only true by God. the no, Pharisees. He, he, he doesn't want to deal with that, this verse actually. 
Mm -hmm. he, he wants to learn one talk about that because that, this is so clear. That you are the only true God? Yeah, he's, okay. he's a John 17, 3, he says, now this is life eternal, that they may know you the only true God. Ed, I want you, to, can you, can you pay attention to this thing? Just, I'm still looking here. I really, I would really like you to respond to this verse because if you are not praying to the right God, you basically are wasting your breath and your time. You can mark that down and you, you can come to it, right? Brother Ed, you can mark it down. The thing is that Jesus, there is no response recorded by Jesus in that scenario. Because I, but let him look up. But you know, if it takes time, then we can deal with other passages, as Brother Abdul Khadir has mentioned. My thought is that the single most important topic in any religious discourse is who is God and who is not God? Because whatever I'll else agree you are, with that. whatever else you are doing, you are it's just trivial. If you are not praying to the right God, doesn't matter who else you are praying. Doesn't matter how uh, how righteous you could be. My point is this: when you hear Jesus saying this, that he's talking to his God, he says, "You are the only true God." I, I'm I'm kind of surprised at, at that you are not paying attention to these words. You're looking for something that he did not say, and you are ignoring something that he did say. So, brother, and there is a word, verse up there, in John chapter 17, verse number 3, okay? That brother Abdul Khadir has brought up. Looks like you still want to find that. You know, even if he finds that. I can tell you it's not there. <laughs> because no, no. he didn't respond. He did sure, not say sure. anything. And even Jesus, peace be upon him, when he comes in the second coming, says in the Revelation chapter 19, he's going to slaughter those who will not believe in him. How is that a prince of peace? In the Old Testament, Jesus killed many, many people, even the babies. He commanded in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse number 3, go to the Amicalites, utterly destroy them, the men, the women, the children, and the infants. Jesus is saying this, this commandment. How can he be a prince of peace? But you may say there's a proper context. He, okay, he allowed, if you believe in him, then there is no problem at all. There is one God, and He is the one God. So is He, he the, the one that He is ordering to killing the babies? Why did He order killing of babies? Your Jesus, not the Quranic Jesus. Quranic Jesus is sinless. He's a prince of peace, like all the prophets. Why did your Jesus commanded killing of innocent babies? You mean in the Old Testament? But He was the God of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament? Yes. Was okay. He not the God of the Old Testament? The God of the Old Testament had given these people plenty of opportunities to believe in Him, and when they got to the point where they weren't going to follow him, they had to be done away with. Even that the was infants? the judgment that God... No, say Jesus. Don't no, say I'm God. Saying Jesus, God yeah. I say God in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. okay. he, he, well, Jesus he, didn't show up until so the Jesus New Testament. So Jesus was not, didn't exist. Okay. So we've, we've hit exist, the wall. Though, how would he be gone? No, no, we didn't hit the wall. It's just logical. No, I've right? hit the wall. Okay, you did. Yeah. See, and any commandment in the Old Testament was coming from Jesus. Okay. So... So important, uh, Brother Ed, I hope and pray that the oneness of God and Jesus as a prophet of God is what we believe and we invite you to believe that along with the Quran and Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you want to come back in the second sitting, Brother Ed, we can discuss it. It's up to you. Uh, no. no, no I, uh... <laughs> okay. But I, I, I appreciate your time and the chance to speak and... Uh... I'll be praying for both of you. Most likely you are saying to yourself, maybe this guy in the video is lying. And you're right. It's a possibility. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. But because eternal life in hell or paradise is not something you want to take risk in, don't take my word for it. And also don't take the word of your priest for it. Look for the truth yourself. Give it time and effort. It's the most important thing in your life. Do you know why? Because if you read Matthew 7, 21-23, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did you not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Can you imagine after all that Jesus telling you, away from me, you evildoer? Find the truth, don't just follow the church or what they tell you on television.
We can say that there were, within 30, 40 years, there were three major strands of Christianity. Three major understandings of Christianity. The first type is called Gnosticism, which we're not going to talk about. It's a completely uh, philosoph uh, philosophized understanding. Gnosticism, it's a very mystical understanding. And they pretty much eliminated, there's really no Gnostic Christians anymore. The two major groups of Christians, the first of them are called Jewish Christians. This is the name that academics give. Jewish Christians. And the second, some people call them Pauline Christians, following, following Paul, right? So there were Jewish Christians and there were Pauline Christians. Jewish Christians, they believed, amongst other things, that they are Jews. That they have to follow the law of Musa. That they have a sharia, kosher and kashrut and all of these laws. That they have to be circumcised and eat the biha or, or kosher meat and basically be practicing Jews. And that Jesus Christ was sent to the Jews. And that He was the promised Messiah. I.e. this is exactly what we believe. It's exactly what we believe. Right? Now, Paul, who was never an actual disciple, he claimed to be a disciple, he claimed to see Jesus Christ uh, in his vision. Paul was the one who began a whole new theology. What is this theology? Jesus Christ has elements of divinity. He's not just a man, he's a super man, some type of divinity. Jesus Christ came to destroy the law or to obliterate the law. Or well, not destroy, it's not a good word, they wouldn't agree with that. Jesus Christ came to make the law unfunctional. Jesus, he came to replace the law. If you believe in Jesus Christ, there is no sharia. And there, the, the, the whole question of, of circumcision is discussed in the New Testament. So he said, you don't have to circumcise. You don't have to do the sharia anymore. And then he began some elements of the Trinity. He began this and that. So this is called Pauline Christianity. For 300 years, Christians debated over what is the meaning of Christianity. What is Jesus Christ? Is he a prophet? Is he a God? Is he a son of God? What are the Bible? What is this and that? Until finally, and the Romans, initially, you know, the Romans were a pagan religion, right? They had the God Jupiter and they had this. The Romans were the worst enemies of the Christians. And there are these stories that they would find Christians and throw them to the lion pits and they would, you know, uh, the, the Emperor Nero burnt Christians alive. He, 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 he made the whole city of Rome burning a light by Christian bodies. He would light a Christian for the light bulb of the city. So he was, they were, these were evil people and Christians were martyrs and they were persecuted. So for two, three hundred years, Christians were martyrs until a miracle happened. They were probably around three, four percent Christians of the Roman Empire until a miracle happened from their perspective and that is the emperor converted to Christianity, right? Constantine was the first convert of the Roman Empire to Christianity, the first emperor, sorry, to convert to Christianity. Now, Constantine isn't just some Joe on the street, he's the emperor. So he's not going to have these bickerings going on. So he convenes a whole council. All you Christians were fighting, come let's, let's, have a, let's have a dialogue. And let's figure out what Christianity is. And then he wanted a certain version of Christianity. We're just zooming this quickly through because he's a pagan from before. So he wants a little bit of a paganistic uh, element of Christianity. And so from that we get the 25th of December. We get the concept of halos. We get the concept of, of a trinity. We get this. We get the son of God because they had a son of God in Mithra. All of this is, you know, we, all of this comes from, from Constantine's uh, uh, decision in 325 in the city of Nicaea, which is now in Turkey. He held a council called the Council of Nicaea. In 325 CE, Constantine decrees official Christianity is basically Pauline Christianity. All other Christians, we're going to do to you what our ancestors did to the other Christians. We're going to burn you, persecute you, kill you. So there was a massive outflux, an immigration, a hijrah of original Christians to other lands. Right? And this is why it is said that some of them came to the Najashi's kingdom and so the Najashi's kingdom had more Jewish Christians than others. Others went to Iran and so Salman al-Farsi, so we're going to come to is there. But the Roman Empire officially banished Jewish Christianity. And there was no such thing as Jewish Christianity officially in the Roman Empire. So Pauline Christianity then became the standard from Pauline. We got the Orthodox, the Catholic, the Protestant, and that's basically 99.9% .9 of Christians. The original others are all completely gone. If you decided to get more detailed information, we have a full series with the complete story in details and proof from the Bible itself. It's not short, by the way, but you can't find the truth about God and salvation in a quick short video. You should do yourself a favor and dedicate time to watch it you will be shocked when you find out what's really going on. And if you want to talk directly to us, or if you have any questions, we are available on Discord and Facebook. We would love to join a call with you to answer all of your questions. Links are in the description and first comment. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe, and to hit that bell icon. Assalamu alaikum.